All right, we're going to review uh, the pelvis, uh, all the bones of the pelvis. The pelvis uh, comprises of three bones, or the pelvic girdle comprises of three bones, two oscoxi, and we're looking at one oscoxi right now, and then the sacrum. So before you start to identify bony parts, identify what you're looking at and from what view. So here we're looking at a lateral view because this is the acetabulum where the hip joint is. And above is superior, below is inferior, to the right is anterior, and the left is posterior. So let's look at the three bones that are fused together that comprise the oscoxi. We have the ilium, which is on the top. So you can kind of feel the top of your hip bones um, just right below your belt line. Then you have the ischium, which is what we call your sits bone, right? That is the point where when you sit on a chair, that is what engages with the surface. And then we have the pubis, which is in the front. So it's kind of a curved uh, 3D bone. So particular points on the oscoxi. We have the acetabulum, which is where the hip joint articulates. That uh, creates the hip joint. So the femoral head sits right in here on the acetabulum. And the acetabulum is kind of the meeting point for the ilium, the ischium, and the pubic bones. So more about the ilium. We have the iliac crest, which you can palpate again on the lateral side of uh, above uh, your hip joint and just below, say, your, your waistband. Then you have on the anterior side, the anterior superior iliac spine. Anatomy is fun because it tells you exactly what it is. It's like a map. So it's anterior, it's superior, and it's on the iliac. And it's a spine because it's kind of a protrusion. We also call this the ASIS. For those of you going into PT or, or any sort of training, there's a lot of like shortening of some of these anatomical terms. We also have the anterior inferior iliac spine, right? So it's still anterior, but it is inferior to the superior spine. So the AIIS. On the posterior side, we have the posterior superior iliac spine, kind of where your dimples are, posterior. And then, of course, we will have the posterior inferior iliac spine. We also have the greater sciatic notch, which is where your sciatic nerve passes through. Some people have a narrow notch, so they can be more prone to something like sciatica um, because this is where that quite large nerve exits out of your pelvic girdle. Here's the whole uh, pelvic pelvis together. So you see the sacrum in the middle and the two as cocci that form to make the pubic symphysis. And here are your acetabulum on the lateral side where your femur would articulate. So on the inside of the pelvis uh, the top, you can see the iliac fossa. You have your sacroiliac articulations, which uh, we'll mention again in another video. So now going, moving on to the ischium. We have the ischial spine, which is posterior and um, below the PSIS and PIIS. We have the lesser sciatic notch, and then again, the ischial tuberosity that you sit on, sometimes called your sits bone. We have the ramus of the ischium, and a ramus is just a protrusion of bone, and that ramus of the ischium meets with the pubic bone. Again, looking at the full uh, spine, we can see both our ischial tuberosity. And then moving on to the pubic bone. 
We have the inferior ramus of the pubis, right? So it's coming from the pubic bone and it's merging with the um, ischial ramus. You have the superior ramus of the pubis and then the pubic tubercle. This hole, anytime you see the word foramen, it means a hole. That is the obturator foramen, and the obturator muscles actually attach near this foramen. And looking at the full pelvis, you can see your arcuate line, which kind of separates the top bowl of the pelvis versus the, the lower bowl, if you will, of the pelvis. And then we can see our pubic symphysis, which kind of connects anteriorly the two os cocci bones um, with the sacrum in the back.